LaCroix number two, it's the lemon flavored. Um, still gross, but you know, it's not as boring as water all the time. I'm assuming it's healthy. There's like zero everything in it. So anyways, bullet notes. I like bullet notes. It's a really concrete way of organizing thoughts or information. And um, it's really good for students who are like more linear thinking, who need that kind of linear a way to organize information. Uh, and plus it uses Roman numerals, which is super fun. You jump between like a main heading in the Roman numeral and then you go to a letter and then back to a number, then like a mini letter. And it's all this bullet point style. It's pretty, I guess it would be, it, technically it would be a good way to take notes if you were uh, a one-to-one -one school and they were using laptops. I still prefer my notebook, but that's me. I like using it in uh, the style I'm about to show you to book talk. And for my example, I'm book talking a very, uh, the book A Very Large Expanse of Sea by Tahir and Mafi. So I would start, of course, by putting the heading up top, the title of the book, in cursive, of course, always, because it's so important to know cursive. Uh, builds brain cells or something like that. Uh, I just think it looks cool. Um, but, you know, then you can get on your soapbox if students start complaining, I can't read your cursive, then you can, you know, tell them why it's so important to know cursive. But, uh, three things that I focus on, the author, the setting, and the characters of the story. So first of all, the author, and you'll see, like, I like to leave blanks, so the more we learn about the characters, the setting, the story, the plot, we can go back in and fill details. So as you're telling students to, you know, model what you're putting on there, maybe ask them to skip lines. I have some blanks on here noted. The uh, author, of course, is Taha de Mafi, and I'd like to include details like other series that this author wrote. She wrote the Shatter Me series, which is fantastic. It's a dystopian uh, kind of series with like these kids with superpowers. It's really cool. I would never teach it to students because it has sex in it, but I highly recommend it to you. And she writes some other series that I have not actually read uh, Furthermore and Witchwood. I think they're fantasy series. But the other thing which I think is important just to do as a common practice uh, anytime you're going to study a novel is to find out if that author has a Twitter handle. This is her Twitter handle because how dope would it be if students were, as they were reading, they were tweeting or just like taking selfies with the book and then like asking the author questions because she does engage with her fan base on Twitter. And I just think that'd be really cool if students practice that in the classroom. Because I know that you probably have like no problems accessing social media in the classroom. And of course, uh, you may be at her website on there, which I think is... Now for this story, the setting is a big deal. There's, it's a small town. It takes place mostly at a high school. Uh, the important detail about it too is that it takes place in 2002. Uh, which is after, shortly after 9-11. So what is 9-11? You probably know what that is when I'm referring to 9-11. I sure remember where I was on 9-11, but that's an important detail that you may want to maybe team up with the history teacher, do a collab, cross collab, cross collab. The uh, details about the character. So the main character is Sharon, and this is why the setting is so important. She is a 16 year old Muslim girl. So that is how I would open up the story and then of course we would add on details about other characters going forward. Uh, this is pretty basic, cut and dry. I call it bullet notes because it reminds me of bullet points. You may have learned a different term for it. I don't know what the official term is. That's just how I refer to it. But that's bullet notes. Let's talk about A to Z notes. This is actually a uh, pretty similar to the name notes except you're just using the whole alphabet, not just one term. Uh, I like it, especially uh, for, I used to use it on documentaries. Like, I don't like showing movies in class. I have, I just don't see, um, you know, everyone argues like, you compare the movie to the book. Yeah, I guess. And maybe this is a unpopular opinion, but I feel like there are better things, better topics, the more academic and higher level thinking things you can do than comparing the book to the movie. I mean, I, I used to love it as a student too. Like I was so down after we read Hamlet, then we watched Hamlet. Not the, not the uh, Mel Gibson version, like um, 
the older version, and it was great. Um, but as a teacher, I just feel like there's so much to do, so many different mediums out there now. <sighs> Who has time for movies? But short documentaries or episodes, uh, TV episodes, like for instance, when I talked earlier about those master classes, or I used to love using Morgan Spurlock's 30 Days, which is just a TV show. You can get that done in the class period. I don't want to schedule three days in a row for a movie, but if you do, students should be taking notes or doing something challenging instead of just sitting back and possibly tuning out. So A to Z notes is something I came up with. I didn't want them to just watch a documentary, but I wanted them to take notes on it. So set it up like so. A, B, C, D, all the way to Z on their paper, skipping lines, using the back page too to get to Z. And just like in name notes, as you find a detail, you find details that start with each letter. So for instance, if I was reading, is everyone hanging out without me and other concerns by Mindy Kaling, which is full of just really funny essays. Some are pretty appropriate that you could use in class. Like one of my favorite is uh, Don't Peak in High School. What a great essay to read for high school students, maybe freshmen even too. And so just taking details from the text as you're reading, you try and fill out in the one, two, three, four page essay that you could share with students, find details and add them as you go in here. So, um, and maybe significant details. Uh, or maybe even like actual sentences coming out of here. Uh, like, where's a good one here? And I might be able to elaborate on that. Why is Jack and Diane such an important aspect in this essay? Remember that song? This song about Jack and Diane? Well, she goes off on a really great rant about that Jack and Diane song by John Cougar Mellencamp. So, ooh, can I put that up there? So, just like that. Uh, and some details are good, some are not, but at least they're kind of doing something more active than just either tuning out if they're watching the video or tuning out if they're supposed to be reading a text, they have something to do, they're reading it with purpose. And check out Mindy Kaling, she's hilarious, obviously. So that's A to Z notes. Jabs. Okay, so I won't get into the technical aspect of why jab, the jab itself, is the perfect uh, movement in martial arts, but jabs itself is an acronym for breaking down uh, opinion or argumentative essays. And so I'm going to use Don't Peek in High School by Mindy Kaling again from her book, Is Everyone Hanging Out With Me? Uh, and we're going to jab it out. We're going to break it apart to see what are the, the components that build this argument together. And so obviously, JAB stands for Judgment, Authority, Basis, and Stance. And we set it up like this. You could also set this up on a 3 by 5 note card as well, make it a formative assessment. But we like to practice with lots of space to write on as we read. So we'll have the students say, like, the judgment is, what is the author's judgment? What are they judging? What is the topic? And of course, you could probably read it from the title. She's judging high school. Right, she's making a judgment about your time at high school, in high school. And who's the authority? Well, it's Mindy Kaling. And so we're gonna look for details as we go, why is she an authority? Maybe she has a bias. Remember when we did the thing about bias in previous, previous parts of this video? And the basis is what are the components of the essay that support her judgment? So you take that and you can set a number for your students to reach or you can let them go unlimited, however you want. I try to do one more than three, just to challenge them a bit. And of course they end with a stance, which is where the student reflects on where they stand. What is their stance? Do they agree or disagree and why? You could also, of course, uh, switch it out for summary and they could practice summary, which is always important too. So summarize uh, based on their notes, what the article's about. And that's jabs.